there is Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. You associate him so much with David O'Kady. They're the standard bearers for pool in Spain and indeed all Q sports in recent times. Thank you, the first wreck. Francesco Sanchez Ruiz to break. Very big favourite. Recently turned 30 at Christmas time. And he gets us underway in this Cold race stroke. tonight, but does so with a scratch. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. He parked the cue ball Ballin. in the middle of the table and a random ball kisses it into the pocket. So we're going to get a good look and at his opponent. Dan Tan Kian. If that's pronounced correctly. Yeah, we got some clarity on that before the match, so I'm told that is exactly how it's said. Wrong stroke. So you said, Carl, you have no idea how he plays the game. We're going to get a very early chance to get a glimpse of the answer to that. Not so sure about his footwear choice, mind. Yeah, let's look at them there. What's the name for them, Carl? You're a bit of a style guru. What would you call those? Shocking. That's what <laughs> I call them. <laughs> Yeah, there's got to be some fancy name, some street name for those. Well, I'm a little lost with that one, so I don't know. But surely they can't be allowed. So the sixth ball is going to be key ball in this rack. That's what Dang is looking at now. It's one of these situations where you'd always like to be close to your work. That's not too bad, a little bounce off the rail will help. Key to this shot is pace. The softer you hit this ball, the less accurate you need to be the eight. He'll be happy with that, it's a good shot. Well, nervous moments for him there. That's the sort of shot that could really your confidence big style if you were to miss it in the opening rack. A huge match against the top player. Well, I can't gravity. That ball went in. Yeah, oh. gravity eventually did its job. So the scratch off the break. Looks as though it's going to be FSR's only involvement in this opening rack. And indeed, okay. Dang leads 1-0. Oh, so still action going on on some of the other tables. I think we're going to have a look at what's going on. Uh, Corrieri, what a day it's been for him. Danielle Corrieri, the win earlier over Skylar Woodward, and now he's followed it up with victory over Dimitros Lukatos of Greece. Comfortable victory as well, so he's through to the last 64. And this man still going strong, Ralph Suke. He's won by nine racks to five against Suto Camino. So Suke is also through. What a way that was to finish. And then a clash of generations in the next round. Suke will play Alusius Yap, who was a winner earlier against Britain's Chris Alexander. The second wreck. That junk came to break. Leading one.
Yeah, just to tidy that up, actually, we don't know yet who Suke will play. That's how it's appeared on the draw here in front of me, but it won't actually be the order of how it plays out because we have to wait for the losers to come through. Anyway, the bottom line is that Suke is through and still going strong after all these years. Trying to get the cue ball in towards the blue two. Oh, that's a nice shot indeed. So he's giving Sanchez a little bit of something to think about early on in this match. Extension, Extension please. This is very, very difficult to hit this ball. And he can't even play a deliberate foul anywhere to tie another ball up. That's what he's trying now. He's going to try and block stroke, one ball going in the top left. But he's hit it too hard, so it's going to be no good. And start the clock, please. I could see what he was trying to do. It was just so hard to make contact on the yellow one ball. Extension, please. Just using his cue to get the cue ball exactly where he wants. So he's having none of it. And if the cue ball is tight on that three, it's another good safety shot. I think he's got to have a go at trying to hit this ball though now, purely because it doesn't look like he can tie another ball up again, just like before. He can go two rails. That's what he's looking at. It's not an easy hit. He's going to be trusting to look a little bit. The one ball may pass the two, but he's going to hit it so good. Ah, oh, it's a good hit, this. It's a good hit. It's a very good hit, and he's made the one. What a shot from Sanchez Ruiz. Yeah, contender for the best shot we've seen all day. Certainly up there with the best outcomes. And a chance for him to get stuck in now to this match after the frustration of handing the opening rack away with that unfortunate scratch. It's very early days in this match, but that could be a pivotal moment. Yeah, absolutely, and we've seen that can be the case when you've got a top player playing the less experienced opponent. Earlier on today, Loho Sum left himself for that testing six in the opening rack against Open Ocean. Missed it and didn't seem to recover until the match was half over. Okay, the two rail kick. Let's give Sanchez this second rack. And with that, he's leveled at one rack apiece. Now let's go to Michael Bridge in the studio. Yes, thank you, Mike. I'm delighted to say so, I'd like to say Shane Walford is with you. Shane, many congratulations. Two wins in two. The perfect day. Yeah, thank you. It's been a, uh, it's been a good one. Really good one. Um, being beating Fabio Petroni earlier, 
just beat David Alcady. That's a big win. Yeah, that was uh, very exciting, and it uh, gives me a lot of confidence going forward. I'm excited for the last 64. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the best players in world pool. Um, was that probably one of your best performances over recent times? Yeah, that was uh, probably my biggest win in my career so far. Wow. Yep. And this is in front of the Moscone Cup captain as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> need to set a good impression with Jeremy. <laughs> uh, is that on the play? A lot, a lot of players' minds is a lot of American-based players have come over here. Yeah, you uh, you want to perform to be able to get to the biggest stage of pool and uh, hopefully we're on that track. Absolutely. You've got a well-earned day off tomorrow. How are you going to do it? How are you going to plan it? You have a nice lie-in because it's a bit of jet lag, isn't there, from a yeah. few players? Yeah, so I'm going to get a lot of rest and uh, get some practice tomorrow and get ready for, for the next day. Well, you deserve that rest. Two excellent performances. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Let's get back now to table one. Yeah, thanks, Michael. And just picking up on something you said there, uh, you were talking about Shane Walford playing here under the watchful eye of Moscone Cup captain Jeremy Jones. Well, when Jeremy was asked earlier about Walford's prospects of being in the team, he said he's right in there. And they're big words to hear. Yeah, it's good to see some new blood coming over from across the pond. Oh, that's a useful flick. But where has the four ball gone? If it's just further enough down from the point and it's touching, that could be real awkward for Sanchez. Quarter finalist in this World Championship last year, beat Noyuki Oi in the last 16 and was then defeated 11 9 by Oliver Shulnoki. Last 16 of the US Open, beaten there by Oi. Won a couple of Euro Tour events in the later months of 2021. <laughs> it's closing in on actually making it three Euro Tour wins in a row at the Treviso Open in November. Got within a rack of reaching the final there. And an encouraging start to this year as well. Won the nine ball division at the Derby City Classic. Beat Joshua Filler in the final. Now is he trying to pop this three and flick into the four? He knows better than us, he knows where this four ball's exactly sat on that point, but it can be awkward. I'm not suggesting he does this, but there is a little trick shot you can do on a pool table. When it's touching that point and it, and it doesn't pot, you can actually hit it very hard into that point and it squeezes in the pocket. I don't think we've ever seen that on a TV table being done. Would this be the first time ever? Does he know that little trick? I'm sure he does know that little trick, so let's just see where he's going to go with the cue ball. Is he going to risk bumping it? He is. He's got to watch the scratch. Oh, delightful shot there from the current number one player in the world on the matchroom pool rankings. Really was delightful shots. Look at this. Yeah, absolute precision. Yeah, just to clarify what you're referring to there, he's got the most points so far in terms of building towards the points base list, which will come into effect at the end of the year. And currently ranked on the basis of committee decision, effectively. So Albert Ocean, the official number one, but Sanchez Ruiz, top of the standings at the moment. The provisional standings, as you might say. We'll see some big changes in those positions this week. So many points on offer here. Mentioned Oliver Shulnoki there. He's 7 6 up against Abdullah Al Youssef of Kuwait on table five. Looks like he's about to go 8 6.
And Alex Kazakis, World Masters winner, 3 0 up on Kunlin Wu. Francesca Sanchez for his two break, leading by two Rex two. Cue ball's going close to that side again, but it's going to turn out okay. This it's going to turn out more than okay. And I think he's even got a perfect angle to draw back past this pink four. This nine ball just caused him a little bit of something to think about. I think he's okay. Just needs to get this cue ball back out into the centre of the table. Yeah, he just doesn't want anything to halt his momentum. He knows he's a big favourite for this match. He's gone in front now for the first time quite early on. Jeremy Jones was saying earlier that some of the top players look on these early round matches in this sort of format as a chance to play their way in, a bit of a workout really, suss out what the tables are doing. Now of course you've got to have some regard for your opponent as well, but Sanchez Ruiz builds a bit of a lead here, as you expect he may very well. I think that's the way he'll be looking at it. Yeah, it was 1-0 down, he was hooked in a nasty little position, he kicked the ball in and, well, since then it's, it's all been Sanchez, hasn't it? Dang has just got to stay patient, there's nothing much he can do. Just got to sit there and hope you get your chance. This is a nice shot, doesn't want to be straight, and he doesn't want to be on the rail. Now, what angle has he got here, if any? Looks like he's got some angle. But he's going to have to play this quite hard to get the cue ball moving back down table. Got to be careful you don't hit it on the short rail because that's what will make you miss this type of shot. And we've all done that. <coughs> oh, this is pretty good, isn't it? This is pretty good indeed. He's feeling good out there, is Sanchez. He's feeling real good. Yeah, hasn't taken him long, has it, to start oozing confidence. A very clean Sanchez rack that Ruiz. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz now gets a bit of daylight between him and Dang. He leads 3 1. Now let's have a look in on table two. Copin Yi up against Foshek Shevchik. And uh, Ko just behind early on here 4 2. That's here to close that gap. Great to see him back involved. So many players who are familiar names that we've not seen a lot of the last couple of years with COVID and everything that's been going on. But we're starting to see now in this and other forthcoming events, those players coming back into the scene. And he's one of my favorite players to watch. He's coping me. Ball 
very nice, doesn't hit anything too hard. Cue ball control. Keep you updated on that score. Yeah, there were so many players who really made a name for themselves in this championship last year, and of course they had to play well to do it, but certainly part of that was the fact that so many big names, established players were missing. So he can't pop the long ball, so Dang is going to get a look at something in this rack. That's all he can ask for. One of those players who had such a memorable week here last year, Oliver Shonoki, is through. He's beaten Abdullah Al Youssef of Kuwait. That one has just finished. So only a handful of matches left out there now on this opening day. Set up for a 1 9 combo. Looks set to me, Michael. Just look at that. Yeah, you could see Dang looking a little bit anxiously there. He knew as the release. one ball came back off the rail that he could be leaving this golden opportunity. Got a fancy he'll get this. Big favourite to make this shot. Bit of good fortune to get the opportunity. He's completed the 1 9 Francisco combination. Sanchez Francisco Sanchez Ruiz now leads 4 1. Just cruising along at this stage. Here's another look at it. Door was open very, very slightly there for Dang, but nothing came of it. And his frustration and sense of discomfort bound to be growing now. Copigny at the table again. Update you on that in a moment. This is the Shonoki win I was telling you about a few moments ago. Very methodical young man his time over everything so much intensity really focuses on a solid technique and it's seen him through to the next round he's in the last 64 track six Francesco Sanchez Ruiz is leading 4-1 and the break Shot the one ball. Does the two ball come out? Does it sneak past the purple five? Doesn't look like it does. Well, it's very tight if it does. Yeah, it looks a bit less promising from that angle than the overhead, I think.
played 14 racks today. Still only lost one of them. It was a 9-0 winner against Bazaar Spahu earlier. What do you think, Carl? Is he a contender for this title? Seen some good form from him in recent months? Yeah, he's definitely coming into that bracket of... I don't know if we want to talk about maybe 10 players. We would certainly stick him in in that list. Obviously, it's still early stages. We, we don't know the last 64 draw, what that's going to be like. Usually when they do the draw for the last 64, you can kind of make a case for other players because maybe the draw's been a bit kinder, so we will just have to wait and see. Yeah, that's when we can make a real assessment of the chances of players, not the obvious ones like Ocean, Filler, Shaw, Van Boning, guys who'll have to be considered contenders whatever sort of draw they get, but one or two other names might emerge as guys for whom it's opened up a bit. Well, he's lost the plot there. Fallen him. Don't see that very often, do you, Michael? Uh, I get a call extension. Yeah. Well, I think the issue is that he intended to take his extension but didn't call it. Marcel Eckhart is now clarifying that for him. Of course, Marcel involved in a big time foul incident just a few months ago at the Moscone Cup with our colleague this week, Jeremy Jones. Well, that's just a horrible thing to happen to a player not used to being on this stage, playing in front of a global audience on the main table against a foreign player, an established name. Things not going his way anyway. And then, now well, a bit of an embarrassment, really, what's just happened to him. Make sure of this shot. It's imperative he gets the right cue ball position on the combo. That would make the combo unmissable. If he doesn't get where he wants to get, then it does become missable. Oh, that was his pace. That's pretty good. In fact, that's lovely because now he can play the combo. He can play the pink four that will squirt over to the top right pocket. So he's going to play the pink four in the opposite corner. This six ball is going to go in. And he's played a high ball and he's topped it through. Lacked a little bit of pace that ball, didn't it? There you see, yeah, he's not quite on this. It's still makeable. It's thin, the cue ball's going to be travelling. He's got to watch the nine ball. So he's come below it, but is he going to go close to the seven? He isn't. And he's going to come nicely for it. Francesco Sanchez Reese wins the record. So absolutely serene progress through this match so far. 5-1 he leads now. Alex Kazakis is through. Let's hear what he has to say with Michael. Yes, thank you very much, Michael. Yes, a good win here for Alex Kazakis against Kunwin Lu. Alex, was that pretty perfect? Yeah, that was uh, pretty nice, to be honest. I was uh, leading the whole month like 6-2, and then uh, he came back. I, I missed a very easy shot to make it 7-2, so he came back 6-6. And then uh, I just took a timeout. He took also timeout. We came back. He plays safety. I jump, and then I run out the set. I make the ball. I run out the set. So it feels really nice after a six to who up being six six. I tell you what feels really nice as well. You can have a day off because plenty of big names who've lost their second match today. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice to be in last sixty four. Uh, 
pretty fast, you know, without even any losses. Tomorrow I'm gonna regroup, practice a little bit in the upstairs tables. And uh, yeah, it feels really nice, to be honest. It's good to see you back on the match in Paul Series. How's it been going for the last few months? Thank you. Uh, I've been playing really good, to be honest. I won a Prado event in uh, like a month ago. Uh, I'm feeling really confident about my game and uh, I, I can't uh, wait to see what's going to happen in the next few days. Brilliant. Well, we can't wait either. Two out of two today. Well done. What do you think, Carl? Is Kazakis in that bracket of friend. potential winners or Francesco is Sanchez becoming world champion just a step too far from at this good. stage? Good question. I feel like he's hovering around the the lower end of that list. But yeah, I mean, obviously he's won the World Pool Masters. Won a big tournament about six weeks ago, so I suppose we wouldn't be too shocked. Maybe play the bank shot on the one. But getting position on the blue two is going to be the difficult thing. Because the cue ball's coming away from that line. That's the problem there. Plays pretty quick, does Sanchez, but he likes to walk around. That's where most of his time goes. It's not so much he's slow on the shot, it's more he's a little slow on his decision making. So he's tried to hold the cue ball. He's done a pretty good job there. Played that with left hand spin to kind of squirt the one ball a little wider. Didn't get adventurous there. Many a pool player may, may have topped that ball through with a little bit of high right-hand English, but he just took his medicine. He took what the table gave him. Just leave yourself a shot on your next ball. Got to play this a little soft. Doesn't want the six ball to get a little weird, and it doesn't. That full contact makes this. Well, it looks like it makes this rack over. Yeah, and I think Sanchez Ruiz is now probably in his own head, starting to think not so much about winning the match, but trying to get it won nice and quickly. And with this first day done, very little nervous energy expended. Didn't lose any racks in his first match. He's only lost one here. It's a funny old game pool, he's 1-0 down, he's hooked in a nasty spot, he kicks the ball in. Yeah, Frank, Francesco Sanchez to break. We do love a bit of late night drama here in the pool world, but we're getting very little of it at the moment. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is in total control here. And having lost the opening rack, he's won six in a row since then against Dang Tang Ken of Vietnam. Well, he's made three balls. Does this one ball cut into the left center? If it does, it is very, very thin. Doesn't look like it banks because of the eight ball. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not so sure it does cut. in this situation where everything's going your way you just sort of feel it should continue in that way and that there must be some way you can pop the next ball if there's any prospect of it wasn't to be in this case just keeping his opponents under pressure smart shot there using the eight ball as well as the two that makes it a bigger target call it on this occasion cost him big time in rack six in his own head he was taking his extension but hadn't informed the referee got called for a time foul and lost the rack that's the ultimate result of that needs a little bit of luck as the eight ball helped him out I think it just might have you know Extension, please. Looks really close from that angle. He's having a very good look. Trying to get the cue ball behind the eight. And what a shot he's played here, by the way. Pace had to be perfect. He's feeling good. And why wouldn't he? He's leading 6 1. He's at the top of the current rankings. He's won a big tournament this year. He always seems to be the, the business end of the pool events. Foul stroke. And he's got ball in hand. Illegal contact ball in hand. Yeah, the full collection, isn't it? So frustrating for Dang. Start the clock, please. It's not really had much chance to show us what he can do. At the moment, it must feel like every time he comes to the table, he's in a position like that. Sanchez Ruiz, a real Q Sports all-rounder, qualified for the Gibraltar Open Snooker, which is a full world ranking event three years ago. A really impressive win in the first round against Martin O'Donnell, who not long after that became a top 32 player. And it certainly wasn't a case of O'Donnell not performing on the day. He had three breaks over 60, including a century. Sanchez Ruiz still beat him, though, and then gave Ken Doherty, the former world champion, a real run for his money in the next round. Just got to keep his focus for maybe another 10 minutes or so. Can be easy to let it drop ever so slightly when everything's coming so easily. Yeah, just a little bit like that show he's played. Didn't want to be near the rail. And when he pops this eight in the side, the natural angle is going towards his left corner. It might be it's in the long left rail, though. Well, he's jacking up, so that tells you everything you need to know. He's going to stun this off the bottom rail. Yeah, nicely done there from Francisco. 
Well, I say nicely done. The cue ball was tracking towards the left centre, but it's actually landed nice because whenever it lands in that kind of position, as opposed to near the rail, you've got that nice little gap from the pocket that you can cue, cue through. It's seven in a row. It's seven one. Sanchez Ruiz is two racks away from securing the place in Friday's last 64. Action also still continuing over on two. This is the Copin Yi match. And at the moment, it's the Wojciech Shevchik match because leading at 6 4. Player who's really been enhancing his reputation of late. He could do so a little bit more here. And as we've been saying, Carl, we've not seen much of Copin Yi on the world stage, but he's still been playing away in his own country, so he's not got any real reason to be all that rusty no he's a full-time player it's, he's always playing um, you know over in Taiwan I think he's got some kind of academy he probably does coaching as well you would think but his brothers are very good so he's got good practice partners as well and he's no stranger to winning these big tournaments so he's not the type of player who would be a bit dazzled in the headlights Obviously, he's in a battle there. Day one has just been ticking along nicely. It's been a few, just two or three shocks, really, on paper. Well, this is a beautiful break. That's the break I like to see. Straight down the middle, park the cue ball. That is, that's a purest break, that for me. None of this silly cut break. Yeah, you mentioned some of the surprises we've had. David Arcady, Sanchez Ruiz's Spain World Cup partner and good friend, fell victim to one of them against Shane Wolford. So Arcady will be back tomorrow to play on the loser's side. And Skylar Woodward, of course, will be involved in that as well after his defeat to Danielle Corrieri. But generally, as you say, it's been a day for uh, the big names getting through. Jason Shaw, of course, is another one beaten by... Michael Gavinciak, nine racks to seven earlier this evening. So you're going to get a few upsets, of course, with so many matches. So we've not seen Gang at the table for a while with an open look at a ball. Seems like a lifetime ago. He's just got to put everything out of his mind. The situation he's in, little things that have gone against him. Yeah, he's just got to try and take this rack. We know the table is breaking very generous, so I'm sure he's more than capable of putting a, a three or four pack together. Even a three pack would bring it to seven five. They're the little goals you've got to set yourself. True, what you're saying about the table and the way it's breaking, but at the same time, you wouldn't say we've seen that high a percentage of runouts from the break compared to what we normally get at this level. Yeah, not on the centre court table. I would imagine on the outside arena tables, there's been a few four, five, six packs somewhere along the lines. So this has been a good effort after everything that's gone on and after losing seven racks in a row. It was far from guaranteed that Dang Tang Tien was going to capitalise on that chance he was given, but he has. He stopped the rot at last. Still so far behind, though. It's 7-2. Chang Jung Lin is currently about to get a match underway on table three. Can't quite see who his opponent is, but Chang, it is great to see him back. He falls into that bracket 
of um, Shane Van Bonen, Coping, Yee, Joshua Philly, definitely one of the top eight players in this event. Quality, quality player. Sanchez Ruiz there, as we were saying, turned 30 just a few months ago. Number 20 in the current world rankings, but that's based on that committee decision in terms of where players will be ranked at the start of the year, as you say. He's got the most points so far in the context of the points they're building up throughout this year for the rankings that will then come into effect at the end of 2022. And of course, which will determine the number of places on the Moscone Cup teams. As you also saw in that graphic, quarter finalist in this event last year. Chang Yong Lin, incidentally, is playing Ilul Kibaroglu of Turkey, who came through in a hill hill finish against Michael Schneider of Switzerland earlier. So is it time to attack the table? Make something happen? It is. Needs the cue ball to slow down or hit the three. That will do nicely. Don't blame him here. Make something happen. Try and keep your opponent in his chair. Well, I think he's got nothing to lose now. No one expected him to win at the start of the match. Well, that was a tidy shot as well. Made that look real easy. Yeah, absolutely. He certainly wasn't expected to do anything from 7-1 down, so really what's the worst that can happen now? He'll want to stay out there as long as he can. Soak up the experience of being on what you call centre court, Carl. Capitalised on a chance which fell his way in the previous rack. He was looking to back that up here. This has all been his own work. He created. Break. Welcome back, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Might be a little surprised to find himself seven. still playing. He was leading 7 1, having taken seven racks in a row against Dang Tang Ken. The man from Vietnam has been given a couple of opportunities to get back into the match a little, and he's taken them well. So he's closed to 7 3 as he starts us off in the 11th rack. Well, this is another good chance. We did say when he won that rack to go 7-2, if he can come with a little three pack to make it 7-5, this will give Sanchez something to think about. The balls are split very nice, so this is a good chance. This is the game of pool. This is what it's all about. A little bit more angle there would have been ideal because now he's going to have to play this with more pace, which means he's got to be a little bit more accurate. And have waited so long in this match to get a bit of momentum. He's got hold of the break. He will fight so hard to hold on to the 
Opportunity he's got here at the moment. Attention, please. very nasty Michael whenever you're playing it into a pocket that's not in your eye line and the cue ball's close it's one of the toughest shots in cue sports and that's why you often see it missed yeah and could that be the moment where this mini revival reaches an abrupt conclusion didn't really need to leave himself in that position Tomorrow's going to be the losers section of the draw, or the left side, as some of us call it. I prefer the left side, but whichever you like. And these winners' qualification matches are not just important to make it through to the last 64. It means you get a nice little day off tomorrow. Yeah, and that'll be Fantastic. useful in a tournament like this, where the matches will be coming thick and fast as you hopefully progress through it. Different sort of vibe tomorrow, as you say. It's elimination at stake then. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, for the first time in this match, really, had been just given that tiny bit of concern and, and then was gifted a chance to seize back the initiative and took it with no difficulty at all. So 8-3, he's on the hill. This is the Copenhagen Yi match. He's up against Foshek Shevchik. And uh, this is to get to the hill at 8 4. Wasn't his best positional shot. Sounded a bit miscue to me. But this nine ball. 10 seconds. Yeah, 8 4 it is. It was a long delay. Just. Uh, I think just before that rack, and Shevchik was out of the arena for some time. Not sure what that was all about, but anyway, he's returned to get himself in a strong position there, and that would be a really good win for him against Copenhagen, Yi, even though we've not seen much of Ko of late. Cue ball's been kicked again, but it's not too bad. It's a thin one. It's going to be very difficult to control the cue ball. The two ball is on the table, it's the, it's towards the bottom right -hand side. And he's got a wall of balls to try and avoid, so this is not easy. Done, Francisco. Played it that way. It's okay, it still goes. No, it's trusting to a little bit of fortune going that way because half ball contact, cue ball would go near the bottom rail. And you can see just enough gap for this ball to squeeze through, and I think. He's done enough now. I think these balls are sat okay. It's 8 3. 
Yeah, hasn't missed much in this match, so it would be surprising if this didn't didn't prove to be the finish. And he'll have got through the first couple of rounds for the loss of only three racks in total. 9-0 against Bazaar Spahu earlier. Well, it goes back to the second rack, doesn't it, Carl? That two-rail kick when he was in a spot of bother, maybe in danger of going 2-0 down. And just because something looks like a turning point doesn't mean it's going to be, but it certainly has been in this match. Yeah, it's a nice feeling as you're mopping up these remaining few balls to put your place into the single elimination draw and to get yourself a little day off. That's a nice feeling as well. You can just relax, you'll put some practice hours in, eat a little bit of nice food, probably sweat some of the matches because, well, it's going to be judgment day. That's what we call it in the world of pool. Tomorrow will be judgment day. Players will go home. So after that loss of the opening rack, he turned it around to lead 7-1. Dang did get back to 7-3 and had a chance to close the gap further. But left himself a tough shot Access into a blind place. pocket that he didn't need to do. And that was the end of any hope of a revival, really. Sanchez Ruiz mopped up from there. And he's eased through this.